video number 43 in the series I'm doing on high school wrestling rules. For those of you that don't know, my name is Alex Green. This is my YouTube channel. Thank you for stopping by and checking me out. Now, whether you are a first-time visitor to the channel or you've been with me from the beginning, I want to say thank you to everybody that watches the videos and shares them. My goal is to get as much credible knowledge out to the wrestling community, whether it's coaches, fans, parents, wrestlers, school administration, new referees, old referees, whoever is involved in the wrestling community, I just want to get as much credible and useful information in video format to you as I possibly can. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do have a Marvel Cinematic Universe style opening now for my YouTube videos. This will be the first one, and you can just call me Ref Man. As you saw by the thumbnail you clicked on in the link description, this is on a topic that is often overlooked, and I'm telling you from personal experience. Because a lot of times when I go to gyms or go to meets or whatever, it's somebody that has no experience with wrestling. They're a parent, a volunteer, a teacher, somebody just happens to be there. Hey, you, I need you to be the score. The team management or home management will get with them, and I kind of got to give them a crash course. And what I have done in the past is I have a little packet of papers that I give to score tables. It's got the referee signals, it's got scoring symbols, the overtime checklist, the injury checklist, all that kind of stuff that they can have it quick access to. And of course, you know, they can go to me or any other credible referee that's there. But nowadays with this platform, I think it's a great idea that we do a video on how to keep score. And I'm going to, of course, as always, give you what the rule book says as far as the scorekeeper and timekeeper go. And I'm also going to show you some live matches. And I'm going to kind of walk you through and put up the symbols as they should appear on a bout sheet. I'm going to show you different type of bout sheets. Now, we know that the apps, there's a, thousands of apps that you can use, whether it's on a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, whatever. You, or you can either you know, keep it on a piece of paper like we have for years. But we know that most teams now are using the some type of mobile device to keep score, and that's fine. I will go into that a little bit further later on, but I just want you to know those are your options that you possibly can do, some type of electronic device or some type of bout sheet or a team score sheet. And to go along with the electronic side of it, and what most of your bigger tournaments, your I know in Kentucky, just about every tournament now, I know all postseason meets are your anything to do with like middle school, region, state, high school, region, state, state duels, anything of that nature is ran on track wrestling. Now, track wrestling is not a sponsor of mine. I'm just stating facts. Track wrestling is a great program, but you need to have somebody on site that knows how to troubleshoot and do all that. It's a very easy process to learn, but you need to have somebody that is familiar with the networking and all that to get going. And that could be its own video on how to keep score on track wrestling. This is the principal basis video on how to keep score. And then once you learn how to keep score, transitioning into track or whatever other type of program that you use will come second nature. But you need to know how to keep score regularly before you start trying to transition into learning the computer side of it, the networking. So I'm going to read off here the what the rule book says. This is from the 2020-2021 NFHS rule book, and you will find this in Rule 3, Section 3, and it's just titled Score. The official score shall be seated at the score table and is responsible for the following. Recording points scored by each contestant when signaled by the official. Circling the first points scored in the regulation match, including overtime. I'll talk about that later. Recording the wrestler who makes the choice at the start of the second and third periods and the position of the wrestler at the start of the second and third periods, including overtime. Constantly checking with the visiting team score. Immediately advising the match timekeeper when there is any disagreement regarding the score and advising the score table, the scoreboard operator or assistant scores of the correct score during the match. Recording the completion time of matches and presenting the referee with a, with the scorebook at the end of the dual meet for verifying the team score and for signature. Let's go back and kind of break this down real quick. This kind of a quick hitters. The official score should be at the scores table. Now, you there can be a 
head score for each match or your team can provide one. Chances are most places that you go, there'll be a scorekeeper and a timekeeper. And you can also have somebody keeping your own score. That's fine. But the time on the clock will be kept by the official head score at the or the head timekeeper at the table. So if there's a few seconds off between when you started on your mobile device or what the actual score clock says, the score clock will always supersede anything else, whether it's on a mobile device, a stopwatch, anything of that nature. But you need to be seated at the head scores table or with an unimpeded view of the wrestling. Now circling the first points, that can be anything. It can be a penalty, it can be a takedown, a reversal, it can be near fall if they started in the up-down position, it can be whatever. But the first point scored, stalling, any point scored needs to be circled. That way, if it does go to the 30-second ride-out, the person who scored the first point will have the choice of either the up or down position. That's very big, and that's a very, very important part that gets often overlooked is the circle, just all you gotta do is, if, if it's a takedown, just circle it, that's all you gotta do. Now the only exception to that is if there's been unsportsmanlike conduct called, let's say the green wrestler does score a takedown first and, and we go to overtime for whatever reason, we're tied up, 5-5. Five, five. The green wrestler scored the first takedown, the first points of the match, it's circled, but he also has an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Well guess what happens? The Red wrestler will get the choice in the 30 second tiebreaker because unsportsmanlike conduct erases the first points being scored. So just a little factoid that you need to know. And as always, the referee will either in an individual meet, he'll flip a disc, he or she will flip a disc, or at a dual meet, it will be determined beforehand who has the choice and it goes back and forth odd even. So the score, the official score will, you know, referee holds his disc up, Green, it's your choice. Red, it's your choice. And they'll signal to the table, you know, red takes down, green takes top, we take, we're, we're neutral, green defers, whatever the case is, you'll circle it or you'll make it in the, in the book. And the next period, if it goes that far, the opposite wrestler, if it's not into the injury timeout criteria, will have the next choice. This does say you have to constantly check with the visiting team score but i would just say at the end of the period to say what what do you have you have you know four two red three eight green whatever just make sure that you're on the same page before you go on to the next period if you do have a discrepancy of score and the coaches come to the table scorekeeper you can speak up and tell the referee to stop the match or stand up and wave or whatever the case is you you can tell the official now you can't obviously do it during wrestling but if the coaches are having an issue or we something wrong with the score clock itself or something was missed or whatever and you have to have a conference at the table you can the scorekeeper you can interject yourself and say hey we need you over here mr official or miss official whoever it is just make sure that we get it right if there is a fall or a tech fall, whatever the case is, we need to note out, you know, if it was the first period, 131, we need to note out a write out on the bout sheet or in the computer program or in the mobile device that you're keeping, just what the time is. That way you have a record. If a tournament gives away, you know, like an award for the quickest pin or most pins in the least amount of time, your wrestlers will be accurately considered for that award. And at the end of a individual tournament match the scorekeeper will be responsible and the way that most bout sheets are printed off from like track wrestling is it'll have green red and it'll have like the school and the wrestler's name and then it'll have the periods and all that what most people do is the winner they'll put a big circle around and put the time or you know winner or and if the, the other person the the loser of the match they'll put an x through their side that way the head score table knows that hey this is the winner this is the loser and the official i'm not saying you don't have to sign every bout sheet but to speed things on and i know sometimes things get hectic just give the score table your initials let them initial it for you or if it's a dual meet go over and just sign the book now i know this is a crazy year that we're in and some states have mandated that referees do not have to sign the bout sheet or the score book at the end of it just have the score initial it for you or just print your name out or whatever 
and that's what we're doing in Kentucky, so it's something you need to be familiar on. But when we get back to somewhat of a normal wrestling season in the next coming years, there's something to keep in mind that hey, get get your referee's initials, get his get his his or her name, and you can just write it in or however they feel comfortable doing it. Now there is a section in here for what's called the assistant score, and I'll read it off. It's Rule Three, Section Three, Article Two. The assistant scorer are responsible for recording points earned by each individual wrestler during the course of the match and circling the first point scored in regulation match. As points are earned in a dual meet, a running team score shall be kept by the following each individual match. In my experience, and I know that this is not the case across the United States, but this is just what I've seen the majority of, is that when a team has their own scorekeepers, chances are they're students. And whether they have a brother on the team, a sister on the team, they may be a hurt wrestler, or for whatever reason they can't wrestle that particular day, they'll keep score. And that's fine, that's cool, great, we love to have you. But most of the time though, your upperclassmen are going to be the ones doing like the actual, the official score for your team. And you could have, there's nothing wrong with having assistants that are learning, because we all got to start somewhere. And like this says, the assistant score can keep the running team score at a duel, or we can, you can come up with just about any type of score you want them to keep, whether who who picks, you know, how many times we pick neutral, how many times we pick top or bottom, whatever the case is. As long as you're keeping it and you're learning the process, that's how you start. To go along with the scorekeeper is the timekeeper. And I'm going to read off what the NFHS 2020-2021 rulebook says about that. Rule 3, Section 4. The timekeeper is responsible for keeping the overall time of the match, recording the accumulated timeouts for injury, blood, head and neck, cervical column injuries, monitoring recovery time, notifying the referee of any significant situation when the match is stopped or disagree by the official score and timekeeper when requested by a coach to discuss a possible error, assisting when the referee is determining whether a situation occurred before or after the termination of a period, when a visual clock is not available, calling the minutes to the referee, contestants, and spectators for displaying with visual cards the number of seconds remaining in the last minute of the period at 15 second intervals. Now let's talk about these real quick. The timekeeper for the most part you're going to be using some type of electronic scoreboard. Nowadays we can hook up our smartphones to like a Chromecast or a Roku stick or Fire Stick and we can have a flat screen TV. We know most schools have those. Set them up, bam bam, Bob's your uncle. We're rolling. They're easy to set up, easy to use. Most people are familiar with the smartphone configuration, a two minute crash course on how to use it, and we're rolling. What I do with every match I've ever refereed in the history of my life is before I start a match, whether it's starting a new match or resuming a match going on, I'll make eye contact with the timekeeper to make sure they're paying attention and they're ready before I blow the whistle because something could be going on. You could have a a board, the power could go out to one of the boards or who knows what, but you just want to make sure that you are giving the wrestlers a fair shake and you're not having them wrestle 30 seconds. I know we can go take clock time back off the clock, but you still, it's easy just to look up at your score table, look over wherever they're at. And for officials and for anybody setting up a wrestling tournament, you need to make sure that the score table is going to be in eye, is in eye line with the start lines. You don't want to have your score table set off to the left or right or to a, an, a, a weird angle to where your officials happen to look off from the wrestlers. You need to have, if you got start lines, the score table needs to be directly behind that so they can line up, look at the score clock, look at, look at the scorekeeper, and have the wrestlers ready to go and the scorekeeper can, and timekeeper both can see the officials so whenever you start the match. Everybody's got eye shot of each other. We're not, you know, having to look off left or right. It's a, it's a, I'm not saying it's a pet peeve of mine, but it, it really shows a lot about schools when you go to a meet or arenas and they have the table set up properly. You know you're dealing with a first class bunch. And I know sometimes situations per, dictate that you can't have every single 
table in every single match like that. But if you have three or four mats down and three of the four are like they should be and you have something weird in your gym or arena to where you can't, that's acceptable. But if every single mat is wrong or has the score table in a wrong position, then you really need to have, you know, watch some of my videos or talk to somebody that's been around wrestling for a while. That way you know how to set up your gym properly. The scorekeeper is responsible for documenting the time used for injury time, blood time, recovery time, and the head, neck, cervical, column injury. And on track wrestling and other programs, it'll even come up and flash if it's the red wrestler that has the has to have injury time for whatever reason. It'll come up and it'll flash if they're whatever their score is, it'll flash and it'll have the injury time ticking off the clock. If you don't have track wrestling, what I recommend is using the phone or some type of mobile device. Even the apps will have, you know, start blood time for green, start blood time for red, and have a cumulative time. And you and referees, we got to go over and tell the coach, hey coach, your wrestler used, you know, two and a half minutes of blood time. Okay, so they got two and a half left. We need to have a documented notation out that's the timekeeper's responsibility for keeping up with it so injury blood recovery and the head and neck cervical column injury timekeeper that's your responsibility to notate the proper time used and like i said with the score keeper if there is a discrepancy on the clock not starting on time or stopping on time the official can make the determination hey i think there was 15 seconds at 15 seconds back take 15 seconds off but you can confer with your timekeeper. And the timekeeper, I know for the most part, it's going to be a parent or somebody of that nature from the school. So you need to try to be as unbiased as possible and to make, to make that determination, just to kind of keep yourself, you don't want to be, you know, cheering with pom-poms and megaphones and stuff from the, school, from the score table. Just try to be as unbiased as you possibly can. And if you do have somebody that in your whether it's your kid or somebody you're your the guardian of or caretaker of or whatever somebody you're real close to that is wrestling there's nothing wrong with saying hey i'm removing myself from this for these matches or this match i don't my son's wrestling my daughter's wrestling and i would be too caught up in the match and i want of course i want them to win so i'm removing myself get somebody to sit in for you for a little bit and then go back to it that happens all the time just something to think about that you can do and calling out the time on if you do, don't have for whatever reason your clock goes down or whatever reason, it is a good idea to have a back. And those are these are I know 1980s era, 1990s era, but a flip chart with the period and the score, and you can keep a on your phone and you can just write up like on a piece of paper, just write 60 seconds, 45, 30, 15, and then count down from 10. And something else that I do, I mentioned in the assistant referee video is about a tapper with a towel. We know at most of your bigger tournaments, you'll have an audible horn. The mats are spaced out well enough, but you could be, you know, at a meet and they don't have horns or they don't want horns used because there's so many of them. They want kids to get confused. That's fine. If you're going to do that, you need to have a youngster, a junior wrestler, a sister, a little sister or brother go out, get a towel hit the referee, or you can even, some places even throw towels, like you're like boxing or throwing in the towel. If they don't have somebody to run out, they'll take a towel, tape it up, and throw it at you, or they'll count it down or whatever. So just little things like that you need to be aware of that you can do. Just make sure, though, you tell your whoever's doing the tapping to not try to hurt the referee or hit them in an appropriate spot. We know certain kids of an age, they think it's funny to try to hit officials in certain parts of their anatomy where they shouldn't be. And I've had to, you know, correct a few kids on that throughout the years. Hey, listen here, you do that again, I mean you're going to be wrestling. And I don't mean maybe, because you don't need to be doing that. And just be, you know, stern with them. Hey, don't appreciate that. Or get somebody else, send them, you know, tell the coach, hey, this little, you know, guy or girl just done this. And I promise you the situation will be corrected. They may even come apologize to you. But just something to think about in the back of your mind of, when you do go to a meet, make sure that your scorekeeper, your timekeeper, knows what's going on. Don't fret, at the end of this video, I am going to insert the scoring symbols, and it will be in, split up into two different parts. 
That way you can screenshot this and have it for reference to go back. You can share it with whoever is on your wrestling equipment managing team or whoever keeps score or whatever. You can just share the, the photo. You can, I'll, it'll be under long enough time for you to screenshot it, I promise. It'll be big enough to where you can see it. I promise you that too. It'll be the updated 2020-2021 NFHS scoring symbols. So now we're going to show you a couple videos. Here are some recommendations on how to make yourself a better scorekeeper or timekeeper or if you're going to be training some people for a meet, just some things that I would recommend. First thing I would tell them is put the cell phone in the pocket or the pocketbook. There's nothing worse than a referee over there, you know, giving points and you got your scorekeeper over there on their phone or timekeeper over there on their phone missing stuff because they're on their phone. Just for the time being, it's not going to kill you to be on your, off your phone for a little bit. Just please put it in your pocket, put it in your pocketbook, whatever. Check it on your break, do what you got to do. But it really takes away from the flow of the match having to go over and correct. And it helps. It's a big help to officials when you don't have to hold up, you know, a point or what you know, whatever the penalty is, and and or get the score table's attention for them to you know pay attention to you. The scorekeeper and timekeeper, you know, should have your eyes locked on the official on the match. That way, you can stop the clock properly, award points properly, all that. And we understand that equipment sometimes malfunctions. That's part of it. But not paying attention though is the big issue. Just please put your phone up and everybody will be happy. If you need a bathroom break, if you need to go to the hospitality room, if you have to go outside and take a breathing treatment, whatever the case is, just tell your official, hey, I need five minutes on this mat. I need, I have got to go to the bathroom. I have got to get something to eat. I need something to drink, whatever, just say it. Because a lot of times at wrestling meets, we get in a flow and you know we're rolling, we're knocking out rounds, we're knocking out bouts, boom, 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 boom. And before you know it, five hours have went by and we've not had a bathroom break, we've not ate, we've not had anything to drink, it's just been non-stop. And sometimes you gotta take a step, hey, coach, tournament director, after we finish this round, this mat that we're on, we're taking a break. Whether you like it or not, we're taking a break. We've been at this for four hours, we're going to get something to eat, we're going to use the bathroom, we need 10 minutes, we need whatever. And you are more apt to keep people and have people want to do it again if you give them breaks. I know this, trust me. There's people that I work with just about every year that when they know when I'm, and I'm not just saying this is just because it's me, but I know other referees do it. But just tell the tell the head coach, tell the tournament director, athletic director, whoever's running the tournament, hey, this this mat is taking a break for 10 minutes. We have to. We, we haven't used the bathroom. We haven't done this, da, 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 da. And then come back and go at it again because after you, you know, you feel better. If you can get up, move around, eat a little bite, whatever, stretch your legs, come back at it instead of just, you know, dreading life, knowing that you're going to be there for six, eight hours, whatever the meat is, and starving to death, um, not getting something to drink, having to hold your bladder, whatever the situation is. Just 
Little things like that can go a long way in helping recruit good scorekeepers and timekeepers. If there is a discrepancy on the time, the score, whatever the case is, who got the choice of this period, referees, you are the conduit between coaches and the scorekeeper and timekeeper. There is never a situation where a coach, whether it's head coach, assistant coach, whatever the case is, should be arguing with the score table. There is no situation where that ever ends well. And scorekeepers and timekeepers shouldn't be arguing with coaches. And that's where we come in. Hey, all right, scorekeeper, what do you have as the score? What, okay, let's go through. This you know, takedown, reversal, escape, takedown, near fall, da 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 da. This is what it has. If the board's wrong, the board, the scoreboard's wrong, we can fix that. If we think that 15 seconds should have ran off, we can take 15 seconds off the board or whatever the case is. If we have bad time, we can correct that. But coaches, you should not be yelling or arguing with the score table or anybody to score table, timekeeper, score, and scores as timekeepers, you should not be arguing with the coaches on any for anything. That's what referees are for. We are the conduit between the two elements there. So just another little piece of advice to keep in the back of your mind. And there you have it. Video number 43 in the High School Wrestling World video series on how to keep score and my tips and advice for scores and timekeepers. Use this video. Don't just sit on it be sure to share this with somebody on your team. If you have friends that you've met on Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat or at a meet or whatever, and their scores for their school, share this with them too. And if you are training, if you're an upperclassman, share this video with your underclassmen. That way, when you're gone off to college or whatever, however life takes you, and they're still there, they know that they were trained properly, and they can look back and say, I really appreciate this person taking the time to train me. I, and then they should be doing the same. Whenever they get to be upperclassmen, they should be doing the exact same thing. You always want to make sure that the next generation is ready to fill in for you whenever you're long gone. So that's enough out of me. If you haven't done so already, like, share, and subscribe. Tell somebody about the channel. If you have any ideas on what videos you guys want to see next, put them in the comments. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Anything you'd like to explain a little bit further, you can hit me up on social media. It's in the description below, or you can just leave them in the comments. But until then, we'll see you guys on the mats.